So as I mentioned earlier, I'm Ron Riley. I'm the Executive Director of Cooks and Hills. And today we just uh, want to start with a word of prayer and uh, just pray for you, our supporters, and uh, what's going on in, in your life. We know with uh, COVID-19, there's been a lot of turmoil around. And so let's just start with a word of prayer. God, our Father, uh, as we come today uh, to this table, as we share with one another, uh, this dinner time, this wherever they are, whatever they're doing, as we share this time with one another, God, we just pray for comfort and peace in the lives of everyone uh, that's connected to Cooks and Hills in whatever way they are. God, we uh, ask for uh, our churches and our supporters that you would strengthen them and encourage them during this difficult time, uh, that you also be with the children and the staff here. God, just bring your blessing upon us. And for those that are uh, having a meal at this time, would you just bless this time of fellowship and nourishment uh, to their bodies and may their minds grow uh, as they listen and learn more about Cooks and Hills. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we are excited. If you are unfamiliar with Cooks and Hills, maybe this is your first opportunity to really get an overview. Remember that we are a children's home uh, for at-risk youth. And what that means is we have uh, homes, uh, therapy, uh, school, uh, for all the children uh, that we can serve here uh, who are at risk. And that can mean a lot of different things, but for one reason or another, unable to uh, stay with their uh, biological family. And so they come to Cooks and Hills to be part of uh, our ministry here uh, to grow and to learn and to, a lot of them get caught up in school. Uh, we have a Christian accredited school. We have uh, house parents that run homes that can hold up to uh, 10 placed children. Uh, and we have therapy, uh, licensed counselors that work uh, with our students uh, each and, and every week and have the opportunity to help them grow uh, through uh, some of their hurts and their traumas from the past. So that's in a nutshell what we do. We're in Northeast Oklahoma, a little town called Kansas is just north of us. And so it gets somewhat confusing when people say we're in Kansas, it's Kansas, Oklahoma. But I want to give you a view of what's been happening, especially in light of the, the COVID-19 and how that maybe has impacted us a little bit, but just a, an update. So let's start with COVID-19. That's been a question a lot of people have been asking. How is uh, this virus and this time during our, our national upheaval, how has it impacted Cooks and Hills? And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, no one has gotten sick and we're thankful for that. And, and that's the good news. Uh, we haven't had anyone test positive for, for the uh, virus here on campus. Uh, and so we give God thanks for that. Uh, in this time, enrollment had to be paused. Uh, and that's a difficult thing because we also know it's a very difficult time for families right now. And so a lot of them are having to suffer without any services. And so uh, we're looking forward to being able to restart that. But that's one of the things that's happened. Our school, like all the schools in Oklahoma, uh, the physical building, uh, we're no longer able to use with everybody here together, uh, but we are able to do distance learning, which is really good. Uh, in our uh, counseling, we've decided to move to what's called teletherapy, which is a laptop with a counselor on a video conference with our students, and they're able to uh, still get their same counseling, still able to uh, receive those services that way each week uh, or as they're needed. Uh, and finally, our homes, when you think about the home life here, uh, that's really where the some of the stress has been uh, because our, our house parents don't have that opportunity to let the kids go to school for those hours and so they're like maybe you are or maybe some of your kids or grandkids are uh, having to learn how to school at home uh, through the distance learning but uh, thankfully the teachers have been super uh, helpful they have been bringing resources into the homes and uh, doing everything can, thing they can to support them so uh, that's what's been going on at uh, Cooks and Hills if you have more specific questions maybe about what's going on with uh, the COVID-19 situation, feel free to just put those questions into the uh, uh, comment uh, bar and we will be happy to answer those as best we can. Uh, one of the things we usually do this time of year is just take a look back at some of our goals. Some of you will remember the uh, annual report that came out to your uh, inbox. Um, if you got this either through your email or maybe you got a physical copy like this in your mail, uh, this is the annual report and gives us the, what's happened in the past, but also sets goals for the future. And towards the back are those goals. A little page looks a little bit like this. And I just want to kind of go over uh, where we are at this kind of midpoint in our fiscal year uh, of reaching towards those goals. Uh, the first goal that we had and the first update I want to give is about enrollment. 
Uh, we were, had a goal of reaching about 40 students in our enrollment time uh, by the end of this fiscal year. And right now, uh, we've been averaging about 26 students at Cookson Hills for this fiscal year, which is way below where we wanted to be. Uh, two big uh, complications that we've had in that, one was staffing. Uh, if you caught me out and about during one of my regional meeting tours, you remember me putting a big plea out for house parents. Uh, thankfully, we've got some house parents, just were hired recently, uh, but so far not been able, because of COVID-19, the other big problem with enrollment, uh, not been able to add any more students at this time. So uh, we're getting ready to add more students, uh, and we look forward to being able to do that. But right now, uh, we're still well be below the, the goal we had set there, but we look forward uh, knowing that these new house parents and hopefully the opportunity to add a few more house parents uh, in the days to come, months to come, uh, to maybe at some point get to that uh, goal of 40 this year uh, or in the coming year. Uh, the next goal that we had was about uh, our equine program. Uh, we had set a goal for reaching about a thousand uh, hours of equine assisted uh, activities with our students. Uh, we got almost uh, 700 hours, 631 hours of equine programming thus far this year. Uh, and that, that includes all sorts of things. One of my things I like to do is kind of poke in and see what's going on in the different places. And I love to, to hang out at the barns and see uh, what happens as we restarted this program. Uh, our worker that uh, came in because of your donations, we were able to hire somebody new in this role. Uh, she's really brought back that vibrant horse program that's always been a key part of who Cooks and Hills is. Um, they do uh, socialization type games where they learn how to work with one another in uh, cooperation. Uh, they work on just learning horsemanship skills. Uh, but my favorite part comes near the end of each of those sessions uh, where they get some time just to think about uh, their lives spiritually and they have this devotional time uh, and they pray together and you would just be amazed how the kids loosen up as they go through the horse training how they loosen up as they do the games and then by the end of that time they're so receptive to hear what God is speaking into their lives and so I'm so thankful for each of you that have given towards that horse program you guys have made that thing come alive and it's been awesome to see it uh, another thing that we've been working on is the Footprint Project. We know we had a, a lot of the churches that came alongside and really partnered with us uh, in that, and uh, we're happy to be where we are. We were able to relocate six of our houses out of a floodplain. In 2017, we had a flood come through the valley, uh, one of the hollows, and uh, almost destroyed these, these houses. Uh, and that's a loss we just couldn't afford. And so uh, we took the extra time. Uh, we moved all those houses up on hillsides away from the floodplain. Uh, we've re, uh, uh, taken a lot of the infrastructure uh, and just really reduced it and made it more efficient. Uh, one of the best things we're doing is we're taking our water system and we're updating it. Uh, last uh, summer, we were able to connect our water source to the, uh, to the local community water source. And so now, from now on, we're going to always have clean, sustainable water. Uh, and so we're just looking forward to that opportunity to have all of that uh, footprint project complete. Uh, there's still a few more months uh, left to get all of the things wrapped up that we have planned, uh, but we're well on our way to getting that finished. Uh, Beyond the footprint project, one of our uh, most challenging goals that we set for ourselves was to uh, raise another $100,000 in support uh, from donors like you. And that was a big faith push. Uh, it's not easy to uh, get new donors. It's definitely uh, a challenge, but uh, we are really excited. Uh, to this point, as we looked at, at our fiscal year, to this point, uh, we have... Uh, more existing donors giving, uh, it's, just, it's just been exciting to see how, how you guys have responded to this challenge. Uh, we added 170 new donors. Uh, they joined the mission in 2019, and we've seen a total increase of $49,000 uh, come into the ministry. And now that sounds awesome, but remember the goal was 100,000. So we still got a lot of work to make up in, in that area, uh, but we're gonna keep uh, pushing forward. We wanna introduce more people to who Cooks and Hills is and why this ministry matters so much. And so would you just pray for us as we continue that effort, as we continue to push forward to introduce more people to Cooks and Hills, to the stu students, the children that are here, uh, to the horse program, what we're doing there, uh, to all the therapy and the way that uh, 
lives are just being made better because of Cooks and Heels. Um, I just want to just, just say, because of what you, you the donors, are doing, Cooks and Hills has just come so far. Uh, you know, this is a ministry that started over 60 years ago, and God continues every year to do amazing things. Uh, one of the things that happened in this last year because of you was that an organization called Best Christian Workplaces uh, that we contract to do a survey with our staff. They come in and they see how our culture is doing. Uh, they did their latest survey of our staff and they uh, called us a flourishing culture and named us one of the best Christian workplaces for 2020. We couldn't have done that without your support. Um, the way that you care for our staff and the way that you have been able to uh, minister to our people just through your donations. Uh, thank you so much for doing that and thank you to our staff for the great work that they're doing. Um, nothing's going to happen at Cooks and Hills if you don't support it, uh, if you're not behind us. And we're thankful to God that you're there for us. Uh, your giving to the ministry of Cooks and Hills uh, allows our people to invest their lives into the lives of these children. And because of you and your donations, they're able to use their passion and their love for children to help those kids write a better story for their lives. That's happening because of you, and we thank you for that. Uh, let me just, before we kind of wrap up some of the information, let me just tell you a little bit more about the financial impact of COVID-19 to our ministries and honestly to probably every ministry like ours. Um, it's not going to be a healthy financial picture at this point uh, from everything that we can see. But that's, that's just the way the world looks at it. And we have a mighty God and we have great supporters. And so we know we're going to get through this. Right now, I'm thankful to report because of the great work of our past directors, people like uh, Rick Bayless, Heath Hostetler, uh, we are in a very good financial situation. And so we're going to be able to weather this storm. We have no doubt about that. Um, and so we're thankful to them and, and their stewardship, thankful to our board and the others that work alongside us every day to make sure that we continue to be good stewards of the resources we have. So for the immediate time being, we have adequate resources. Again, I told you earlier, no one's gotten sick, which is a wonderful thing. Um, and we're taking all the precautions that our government has asked us to do uh, to, to keep that from happening. However, in order to continue providing the services for children here at Cooks and Hills, we know that we're going to have to be continuing to ask you for financial support. And so we can't let up, even though uh, things are in a good place at the moment, we have to understand that some people are just going to be in a situation where they're not going to be able to give in the months ahead, and we're going to need others to step up into that place. So uh, please be praying about that. Continue your generosity as you always have. And uh, just know that we appreciate each one of you that gives to Cooks and Hills. Well, before I get to your questions, let me tell you what we're really concerned about. Because there are a couple things that we're concerned about. Number one, we're concerned about our friends, you, that are watching this and all of our supporters, our churches. Uh, we pray that you're doing well through all of this. Uh, we have just got through a time where we went and called a lot of our supporters and personally talked to them. And we know many of them were going through some difficult times. And so we're concerned for you. If you have a, a need, a prayer need, you can send me a private message anytime on Facebook. You can uh, reach out to anybody, uh, call our phone number, talk to some of our staff. Uh, we'd love to visit with you and just pray for you and have that opportunity. But we're also concerned about the children in the homes right now who can't enroll at Cooks and Hills. Um, in May, we hope to restart our enrollment process. That's the plan. That's kind of the, the process our government has set in place for us to be able to restart things as we get closer to a date uh, that they've set. Um, but the crisis that's going on in the homes of these children just doesn't stop. In fact, if we know anything, it's intensified during these last few weeks as the virus has spread, as parents don't have resources like school teachers to help them. And so the need for Cooks and Hills is greater now than probably ever before. And so we know in the weeks and months ahead, we're going to get a lot more calls. Um, as our enrollment coordinator takes those calls, we want to be able to say yes to these children. Yes, we can place your child here. There's a supporter who's taking care of the cost of your child to be at Cooks and Hills. And that's what I encourage you to do. If you have that opportunity right now, you want to get online, you can go to our website and just click on www.cooksandhills.org and there's a, a donation button. You can go there right now today and make a donation if you'd like. 
Um, you may already be planning your giving, and that's wonderful. Just keep that coming because there are lives literally needing you uh, to support them. Well, we're going to take this time right now as we uh, uh, think about uh, Cooks and Hills and what's going on just to uh, t tackle a few questions. Don't have a lot yet, so hey, if you've got a question, now's your time, right? And uh, we want to do that. Um, so Alexis from Oklahoma, and I've got to pull these up over here on the computer, so if I'm looking off screen, that's what's going on. Uh, Alexis from Oklahoma, she asks, because of the current pandemic going on with coronavirus, how is Cooks and Hills handling the schooling situation, and how are you abiding by the safe distancing rules? So that's a great question. So the state's been pretty proactive here, just giving us guidance and telling us what is appropriate, not appropriate. Early on, they asked us to cease operations of the school uh, in the physical building, to go to distance learning, and keep our groups to uh, people less than 10. Uh, I'll just be honest, we have one home that's always 12 people, so it's kind of hard for them to be in a group less than 10 because that's the size of the home. But basically what we've done is we've asked those homes to, to self-isolate from each other uh, during that time uh, that the government has given us that opportunity to say, hey, you can be in these groups of less than 10, uh, you can uh, socially distance, but still have the, the school uh, give materials for the kids to learn. So uh, using, um, we have a, a closed inter intranet system where the kids can get online uh, just to their schoolwork. They can see what's there. They can submit uh, assignments back through that system. They can uh, use our uh, inner office mail as well. But they, they're getting things done without actually having to be in a classroom setting or pass in the hallways with all the students. And that's really important uh, so that if one person would get it, we wouldn't spread it to everybody. So that was the way that we dealt with uh, that situation. As far as day-to-day uh, -day life, we, we closed down our, our, our dining hall uh, so our staff people don't mingle with our uh, house parent people. Uh, we uh, closed down our campus to outside visitors. Uh, we uh, no longer get to go to, to worship in our churches, in our local communities. Uh, we send just one person to a grocery store to get groceries. Uh, so a lot of the things I bet that you're doing in your home and in your state and in your city, we're doing here. Um, I am thankful uh, for our rural uh, existence. Uh, we don't have a lot of visitors anyways. We don't live in a large city. We don't have a big density population where we have to worry about uh, some of the normal things that maybe some of you have had to worry about. So we've done really well uh, in that and abiding by all the uh, regulations that our government has given us. And uh, we're looking forward to, uh, as Oklahoma, like many other states, uh, we'll be moving back towards um, something more what we would consider normal in the months ahead. We look forward to that because it will take a lot of the stress and the burden off our staff. So that's the answer to that question. I'm sure a lot of you had that one. This is a good one. Uh, Lyle and Crystal asks, when do you believe the children will have an opportunity to leave campus for family visits again? Um, from what I can understand from what the government is telling us, um, by June 1st, if things continue to go down, uh, we should be back to a pretty normal operational state. Uh, we may get a chance to do that earlier, um, but that's, that's kind of the government's call on that one. That's what they're telling us for non-essential travel should open up uh, by the first uh, week of June. So uh, we're hopeful for that. Uh, we certainly want uh, our kids to be able to have those family visits. It's super important. Uh, it's part of the healing process for everybody involved and uh, we don't want to uh, uh, be so isolated. It, it is very difficult for everybody involved not being able to travel. Our staff uh, likewise are not able to uh, get out and see their family and it's just been uh, really difficult for everybody. All right, so we had at least a couple of silly things. Esther and Nehemiah want to let Mr. Ron know how much they love their preschool teacher, Mrs. Jama. I want to echo that. Mrs. Jama has been an amazing preschool teacher. We've been actually blessed by two, two wonderful people, the Luckies, Ron and Jama Lucky, and they've done a great job for Cooks and Hills. We're excited uh, to see them uh, each and every day as they work here. Uh, sadly, they are entering a different phase of life, and they're going to be moving on, and we made that announcement on our campus not too long ago, but uh, it will be kind of hard on our little ones. They're really going to miss their Jama. So uh, I agree, Esther and Nehemiah. We, we really like Mrs. Jama too. So here's a good question. How do you welcome a child when they first come and are they afraid? 
Um, so to answer the first question, uh, fear is a very common emotion uh, for most of our students. Um, most of our students have suffered trauma in one form or another, and that just means some bad things have happened in their lives, some hurt of one kind of another. You might think of a child who's maybe lost uh, their family to some disease. Maybe their mom passed away and they no longer have a, a primary caregiver uh, for them. Even if they do, maybe they're not able to be with them, and that hurts. And so when you're hurting, Fear is a very common emotion, and so yes, most of our students have some level of fear or anxiety about coming to Cooks and Hills. Uh, we wouldn't expect them to be any other way, uh, but that's okay because we've got great people here who love to welcome uh, children uh, with open arms. They love to welcome them. Uh, they're skilled and trained in trauma. They understand what it is to hurt and how we can work a process to get them through that. Uh, the the real Clinical answer to that, they're welcomed first and foremost by our social worker staff uh, who greet them and their family. The family comes in, they sit down, make sure they have their plan of care all uh, lined out, that they know what's going to happen while they're here at Cookson, what their goals and their plans are. Uh, they'll say their, you know, their loves and their goodbyes and all of that stuff. Uh, they'll go up the hill, they'll meet with their uh, new house parents and they'll get to see their room and they'll kind of just start uh, learning about life at Cookson Hills uh, in the family. So the first few weeks they usually are not in the school, they're just getting used to life in Cookson and then as they acclimate and get used to what it's like to be here as a Cookson Hills uh, child, then they'll start school within a week or two uh, once they kind of have their feet under them. And so that's how they're welcome to Cookson Hills. It's very friendly, it's very warm, it's very loving. Uh, it's done with a lot of uh, trauma-informed care and love and logic. All those things kind of pile in to make it a really good thing. So those are the questions that I have right now. Sarah got any more questions for me? She is scanning. How many horses? But I know it's 12. We have 12 horses. She already needed to answer that. Seems like everybody knows all the horses and what their names are. Um, I just call them horse and they seem to still come. So that works for me. But uh, uh, Bayou and I are in a pretty good relationship. He, he, that horse has a special pin uh, sheet has a special pin, so that's how well I know her, uh, right up uh, by my walking route, so I see her quite a bit. But uh, the rest of them are horse to me, but uh, the kids all know them by name, they love them. Uh, the horse program's going great. Thanks for asking about the horses. 12 horses uh, roaming our pastures uh, and uh, enjoying life at Cookson Hills. Couldn't be a better place if you're a horse. Did anybody, I have a question for people listening. Did anybody get a note recently from a horse I wonder, you, if you didn't, you missed out. You, you should probably ask Sarah about that in the comments. What's the deal with the horse? She can tell you all about, we got a horse that's learned how to type and it's just an amazing thing. So he's randomly sending letters to our supporters. I hope you get to hear from uh, the horse again. He's pretty good. All right, any more questions? I think that's it. Huh? I'm just gonna look through here again. Don't see any. Okay, we got a couple. All right. Okay, what happens to a student when they graduate? That's a great question. So it really goes back to that document that we talked about when they get here called the plan of care. That document's always changing, always uh, getting uh, closer to the reality of what that child wants to do when they leave Cooks and Hills. Ultimately, it's up to the child, isn't it? They're going to be like any other child in their family. They're going to make some decisions in their senior year about what they want to do when they graduate high school. For a lot of them, we work hard to get them scholarships to local universities so that they can attend college of their choice. Uh, for others, they've made plans to um, get a steady job and to do some sort of uh, skilled work in our community, uh, get an, an apartment. Uh, others are going to move far away. They're going to go back to a home state that may not be anywhere near Oklahoma and they're going to reconnect with family and the family is going to help them work through some of those processes. And so it really depends on the child. It's, it's always catered to what's best for the child and I'm so proud of that. Everything we do at Cooks and Hills always revolves around that question. What's in the best interest of the children at Cooks and Hills and what's in the best interest of this specific child? 
um, we try to we try to always answer with that question uh, anytime we're trying to figure out what to do for a child what's in their best interest and so for some it's getting an apartment and a job for others it's going to college uh, those are the typical things that happen with a student when they graduate so let's see, Marilyn asks, I'll make that a little bigger so I can see. Oh, I missed one here. Six. <laughs> Jan asks, what is your greatest need right now? So our greatest need right now is financial support. And so we, we have probably uh, a needs list. I know we have a needs list on our website. And that's always something. If you have the desire to do something tangible that you like, I want to go out and buy something for the kids at Cookson. So there'll be a, a needs list for our teachers. We had a couple new house parents that just moved in. Uh, they might have specific needs that are on that need list. Um, so you can look at uh, our, our web page. Uh, that's on the COVID-19. If you click on the, the big banner that's at the top of the website right now, where it kind of has the virus looking image, click on that. There'll be a needs list in there. You can do that. Uh, but other than that, it's financial support because a lot of our uh, giving right now is just a little bit below what's normal at this time, and we want to uh, make sure we hold that up. So uh, those would be our two greatest needs. Uh, we're also hiring. We're always hiring. Uh, but right now we have two positions that are super critical. One is house parents, and you've probably uh, seen me ask you about that before in the past. Uh, we would love to ramp up a couple more house parents before the end of the year. And so we had a few people interested, but with the virus, nobody wanted to move uh, except for the Torkingtons and the Hensons. They came in, they said, virus, forget it. We are brave, we are coming, and we're so happy about them being here. Uh, and so they came, but we're, st we're still trying to get a few more here. Uh, and then the other need we have is a preschool teacher. Uh, if you know someone who'd love to do what Mrs. Jama would do, Esther and Nehemiah would love to have another preschool teacher. So uh, we'd love to talk to you about that. There's an employment tab on our homepage. Uh, you go to cooksonhills.org and you can uh, find that there. So those are some of the needs. Okay. Do you know anything about the students' lives, the children's lives, before they walk through your doors? Uh, we have to know quite a bit about them but we will never know everything. Um, and so we'll know their school records. Uh, we'll know if they've, you know, how, how much they've been seeing a counselor before they come here, uh, any kind of therapy they've been doing. Uh, we'll know um, the behaviors probably that have caused uh, maybe a problem in their past. Uh, we'll know some of their family history. Maybe there's a separation between a mom and a dad, or maybe there's a death in the family. Um, maybe there's uh, something else going on that's very significant, uh, life change in their life that's caused this, uh, this need for a placement. So we'll know those things, those basic things, uh, but the importantest, the most important things probably we don't uncover until they've been here a while. They go through kind of a phase of just learning what it's like to be at Cookson and then they begin to talk and share some of their needs. And as we learn that, that's when that relationship really begins to build with our, our children and our staff. Uh, we always look for kids to come and stay here at least two years because it takes about two years for a student really to start growing uh, in a way where we can really see significant change in their life. And so that's part of that is getting to know them better. So we know a lot, but we don't know enough uh, when they come. And so we'll learn. So Blenville's uh, Christian Church is with us. Hi, Blenville. Uh, how can local churches help once the quarantine is lifted? Uh, so there's going to be some very significant needs. Usually by this time, we've already had um, probably three to four missionary uh, church teams come and do work on our campus. None of that has happened to this point. And so that's going to be a, a huge need is having uh, groups of people that are willing to come as mission teams to Cooks and Hills. Um, and those teams can do a lot of different things. The best thing to do if you're interested in that is go to our website. Uh, there is a I want to be involved, I want to get, get connected tab there. Uh, there's one specifically about bringing a team uh, and you can uh, jump on that, put your information in and this wonderful woman named Debbie is going to call you and she's going to say what do you want to do? Do you have any ideas? What are you thinking? And she'll talk through some of our needs and, and uh, things that didn't get done because nobody could come. So we're going to have some very specific needs uh, that will be available for churches. Um, most of them involve having boots on the ground, people being here, uh, doing some labor of some sort, uh, 
helping uh, our grounds team or helping our maintenance team. Uh, those are typical. Some help with the education side, uh, maybe doing uh, activities with kids, uh, kind of running like VBS, or, but a little bit more active than that, you know, doing a lot of running and active games with children. So uh, those are just some examples. Debbie has a, a lot of experience setting up your team, what your skill level is, what uh, things you want to do with what we need. And so she'd love to talk to you about that. All right, final question. What about that music program someone wants to know? Wasn't there a music program? There's still a wonderful music program. It's really hard to do band though through social distancing. So they're not getting a lot of in the classroom experience right now. So uh, yes, the music program is dynamite here. It's amazing. Uh, we have the opportunity every once in a while to uh, take some children to a church uh, not too far from here to perform. We had an opportunity for some others to perform in a parade uh, around Christmas time. Uh, they are amazing to listen to, these, these children. And some of them have picked up an instrument just in the last year or so. And so they're learning for the very first time how to play these instruments. Uh, drum corps, uh, middle school band, uh, vocals for all ages. Uh, it's been a delight to hear. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure there were a few activities for some of the kids that got canceled because of the virus. They were supposed to go to Tulsa and be involved in some things. Uh, that didn't happen, so they missed out on a few things, but so did everybody, and we'll just pick up where we left off, but we're thankful for our music director. Uh, he does a great job, and uh, so we're excited about that. Well, we really want to thank you guys for letting us come here. Um, there are a few links that Sarah's put in the comments. I'll take you to the donations page, uh, some other links that uh, you could um, jump on. One of those is cooksandhills.org slash COVID-19. You can kind of see the general responses, things that we put out already about how we responded to that. Uh, so you'll want to look at the, the website, www.cooksandhills.org. Uh, click on the tabs that are interesting to you. If you're interested in how you can uh, be part of our team, there's a tab for that. If you want to know more information about what's going on right now, there's tabs for that. Uh, also encourage you just if you're a Facebook fan, just scroll back through some of our uh, recent posts. Uh, Sarah does a great job of keeping you up to date on things uh, every day. Uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook, I'd love to add you. Uh, just send me a friend request. It's real easy. Uh, I like to throw things about Cooks and Hills a lot on my uh, personal Facebook page. That's pretty much all it is. So uh, we'd love for you to, to, to be a, a follower there as well. So in closing, just want to say thank you again for letting me come into your home tonight. Uh, if I joined you for a meal, it was awesome. You know, my compliments to the chef. Well done. You did really good. Um, I'm thankful uh, for everyone who supports Cooks and Hills. I'm thankful uh, that we got to meet in this socially distant but a uh, very fun way. Uh, if you've got more questions, feel free just to add them in. We'll scan this for the next few days to see if there's any other questions we need to respond to. Uh, but we thank you again for coming. Thank you for supporting our children here. Uh, we look forward to a day where you can come again and meet them in person and, and hang out with us. Uh, there's so many things that you could do as a church, as an individual, to come and be part of Cooks and Hills. Uh, we thank you again. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Check us out on the webpage. Uh, we'll see you soon. God bless.